so glad to be in service. Didn't have to let it be. Didn't have to let it be. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Prince of Peace Apostolic Church. We're located at 6848 South on Cottage Grove Avenue, where the pastor is Pastor Kermit DeLashman. I am Bishop John McCall, Senior Pastor. We ask you to join in with us now and enjoy the Lord in this wonderful service of praise. Be in service, glad to be in service one more time. Didn't have to let it be, didn't have to let it be, I'm so glad. One more time, one more time, I'm so glad. And now the Prince of Peace, Apostolic, Singer. Give God praise, hallelujah. Come on, give him real praise, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's put our hands together, come on. How many know he reigns? Come on, right here. Oh, hey. All hell, the king of Abraham. All hail the great I am. All hail the great I am. The only king who died and rose the again. The only king Woo. who died and rose again. Hey, hey, the only king. The only king who's who reign. will never reign. Come on, let's go. Say, say he reigns. Great I am. Oh, hell, the great I am. That's it. The only king who died and rose the again. The only king who died and rose again. The only king whose reign will the never only end. King will reign Come on, we gotta make some noise. Come on. The king reigns. He reigns over all. Right here, come on. No crown no of thorns. No thorns. Can he in? Can he in? No tomb. No tomb. No grave. No grave. Can he in? Can he in? No death. No death. On the cross. On the cross. Can he in? Can he in? Put your hands on it. Kill it. 
Whether you know he reigns. Does he reign? Oh, he reigns. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, no one can beat him. No one can beat him. No one can kill him. No one can kill him. No one can dethrone him. No one can dethrone him. Because Jesus reigns. Jesus Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. When I think about all the stuff that's in my life that's trying to reign. Oh, God. Sickness will try to reign, you know. Yeah. Poverty will try to reign. Oh, God. Depression will try to reign. But how many know that there is nothing that compares to our God. The scripture says power belongs to God. Oh. Look, that'll make me run. Let me stop. Listen. When you start thinking about all the things that think they got power. The scripture says. How many still believe the Bible? That power belongs. Somebody just tell somebody real quick. All power belongs to God. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Come on, help me say. Whatever it is. Whatever it is today. It's in the room, say, it's in the room, whatever it is today, whatever it is, yes, God, we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, whatever it is, whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is. it's in the room, say, it's in the room, say, healing is here. your neighbor and tell them whatever it is yeah. whatever it is today I don't care what you're going through whatever it is it's in the room it's in the room come on and say healing is here chapter of Romans starting at the 13th verse for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed 
How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I'm grateful and happy to announce that we have a preacher this morning with a word from God. Amen. Shall we stand at this time? Receive the pastor of the Prince of Peace Apostolic Church, Elder Kermit the Lashman. How about point your hand up this way and say, preach the word, Pastor. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. All right, listen, um, I wanted to... Um, just thank everybody for last week. Um, we, we shortened our service so that we could go be with Sister Miranda on last week. I wanna thank everybody that came out to show um, our church family that we love each other and that we try our best to take care of one another. So Miranda, we are still, we love you and we still praying for you. Amen, that God continue to keep you. It's not easy to lose your mama, man. It's not easy to lose your mom. So we just continue to lift her up in prayer. Good to see you still in service today amen and god is gonna do it baby he gonna do it he gonna do it he have to do it because we praying that he do it so so we thank and praise god for that just want to announce real quick that um brother billy shira um is uh, the ambulance came to get him he's not feeling well so i need everybody to be in a moment of prayer for our brother um he's one of the hardest working people we know but how many know the devil is a lie? You don't get no victory around here. It's too much healing. Too much faith in this house. Watch this. Too much prayer in this house. You can't cut up and act a fool here and think you're going to win. Somebody ought to just say, devil, you a lie? In the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's, let's keep him in prayer on today. Amen. I believe, I don't know if they pulled off yet, but I know the lamb, ambulance is working on them. Uh, but, but how many know we're going to get a praise report in just a little while? Ah, I feel my scripture coming because he that shall come, he will come. And he won't tarry. Woo. Ah, thank you. Amen. I got something I want to share with y'all real quick. Um, we got some great news, y'all. Listen up. I got this text this morning, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, hello, pastor. Good morning. I'm right to inform you that I am moving. Thank God. I am leaving the shelter today with my children and my family. And all we have is our inflated mattresses and our suitcase, but I am very grateful to God that finally, after eight months of fighting, we are going to have a decent place where to rest and everything is possible with faith, perseverance, and prayers. So listen, I'm telling our church now, um, I've already talked to her, she declined. I don't care that she declined. We're gonna get them furniture. We're gonna get them all the things that they need so that they can get off the ground. It's not enough just to have a mattress. Come on. Amen. So we're going we gonna to find a way to bless that family. So we got to get the address and all that, and we're going to make sure they have everything they need. Amen. Um, so again, listen, the kingdom has to be, has to do kingdom work. Amen. The Bible tells us over in Acts that, that all of the saints came together and they all got together and they put all their stuff together. And they made a commonwealth. That means if you got it, I got it. And if I need it, I can just come to the commonwealth. Listen, how we got a bed and they don't have one? Come on. How we got dressers and stuff and they don't have, come on. That ain't right. So the kingdom has to be the kingdom. Somebody say, this is kingdom life. Amen. Come on, isn't that wonderful though? We have been a blessing to this family ever since we met them and we thank and praise God. Amen. They just wandered down here. And next thing you know, we've been attached. And here, this is how powerful this is to me. 
They don't even speak English, but they come here. <laughs> they, they sitting there waiting on an interpretation. What did he just say? What did they just say? But they feel the love. How many know that love is a universal language? By this shall all men know that we all follow the Lord, man, and we are disciples for the love that we have one towards another. So I thank and praise God, amen, for them. It is giving time in the temple. We want everybody to be a giver. I'm going to say this to you all again, y'all. Listen, I want to say this. Um, if, if, if at all possible, if you are not tithing in this church, I need you to start tithing right away. Say amen. And the reason why is, or, or, and if you can't get the whole 10%, you can do eight and a half. Do that. Do something. Okay? And the reason for that is we got some things that's coming down the pipe that we have to take care of financially. And again, I'm not asking you all to do nothing more than what God has already asked of us to do. Amen? So again, for those that can, we asking that you go ahead and bless. Amen. Bless the kingdom. Remember, you are not giving to me. You're not giving to senior pastor. You're not giving to first lady. You're not even giving to this church. You're really giving to the kingdom of God so that the kingdom can have commonwealth. Amen. Because remember, you're going to be at the kingdom before it's over. Talking about, Lord, I have need of thee. And you want to be able to walk away with the testimony, all that I have needed. Your hand have provided. Hallelujah, right? So again, we're asking everybody to be a giver on today. Um, again, again, you could just sow um, with Givelify, PayPal, or you can swipe your debit cards to my right and to your left with Sister Renona McCall. Amen? Amen. We and me? B. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day than a thousand years Better is one day in your Better is one day in your Better is one day Bring it down one quickly. Listen, um, Deacon Agnew, I got a chance to talk to him right before service started today. Uh, um, his little nephew, they're, um, uh, they're um, going to be having his memorial service. Matter of fact, I believe it's going on right now. Amen. So we definitely want to pray for the Agnew family. Amen. That God continue to help them and bless them. Amen. It ain't easy to go through this season, right? Amen. All right. Come on. Better is one day.
bless your word today. Help us, God. We thank you for every gift that has been given to you, to the kingdom on today. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you multiply it, God, and allow it to go to the furtherance of thy kingdom, God. Bless every giver on today, God, as you have already promised. Restore wealth in their life, God, and prosperity and health. And for this, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. We love you and we honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel 22 verses 1 through 2 and then we're going to jump down to Matthew 11 and it ain't going to make sense probably when you first hear it hang in there First Samuel 22 1 through 2 says David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dulap and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Ooh. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force I want to use for a subject today cave dwellers the kingdom awaits Look at your neighbor real quick and say, are you a cave dweller? If so, the kingdom is waiting on you. Father, help us right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm a cave dweller. All right, let me go to work. Listen, last week, y'all, we shared. Y'all can be seated. Y'all keep standing. Y'all know I preach longer. <laughs> last week we shared how David had to play like he was crazy so that he could protect the calling on his life listen David overheard the servants of the king which is not far from Philist Philistia saying how Saul slew his thousands but David slew his tens of thousands and the Bible says something very powerful right here. It says that when David heard those words, he laid up these words in his heart. Hmm, God. That it was when David heard his past victories. He heard somebody else telling his testimony. Ah, y'all better catch it. That he was reminded of what his kingdom assignment was. It is important that we not miss the significance of the statement that he laid up this in his, in his heart. See, the heart is where you and I truly, what we really truly believe resides. It doesn't matter if we agree with something that is heard or receive information that makes sense. It is the words that leave our ears, passes through our soul for cognitive reasoning and enters our heart that becomes a part of who we are. Yeah, this is why a person can tell you what you should or should not do, turn right around and can't do it themselves because it's not in their heart. Psych psychologists call this, 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 this issue, this condition, cognitive dissonance. Anybody ever heard of that before? You, you know what to do and you agree that you should do it, but finding the ability or the wherewithal to do it is a whole nother thing. 
See, you can know that tithing is right and agree that it's in the Bible. But to do it is a matter of the heart. You can know that sleeping with somebody that is not your husband or your wife goes against the teaching of the scriptures. And it breaks kingdom law. It brings a whole lot of consequences. You know either from personal experience or seeing your family and friends become victims to the consequences of these actions and yet in your heart you think your situation is going to be different if you do it. Hmm. Once again, cognitive dissonance. We all do what is in our heart to do. Yeah, that's right. Stay quiet. This is why the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin. Come on, where are my Bible readers at? That I, that I might not sin against thee. It's not what you hear. It's not what, I, what you read or what I preach. It's a matter of you and I applying faith to what God has said that causes his word to reach our heart. David heard something that reminded him of who he was. This caused him to play crazy. The Bible said that he feigned <laughs> to be a madman. Watch this. Not to save his life, y'all, but to protect his purpose. Come here. David wasn't about trying to save his life when he got reminded of the thing that God had called him to do. He says, I've got to play crazy to protect the word that had been prophesied over my life. Listen, it was, watch this, it was his purpose that got them snitching on him in the first place. Listen, if David had just shut his mouth, and went back home on the day that Goliath, he was supposed to just drop off the lunch. We wouldn't know about little David today. But David overheard a giant talking smack to God's people about their God. He said, wait a minute, who is this uncircumcised Philistine talking smack about my God? He became what they call righteously indignant. Now, most of the time when a person is indignant, it ain't too righteous. Listen, listen, let me just say this to you all. And I need somebody to, to prophesy to your, to your neighbor real quick and just tell them, say, your assignment is snitching on you. Whatever God called you to do. It's going to start talking if you don't start talking. Yeah. Listen, people can see there's something different about you because your assignment is snitching on you. People will tell their family and friends how you helped them, how you encouraged them, how you fed them, how you sustained them, how you prophesied to them and held them down at that critical moment in their life. You can be out somewhere trying not to be bothered trying to not to, to just do what I'm trying to do. I don't want to be the preacher today. I don't want to be all that today. Try to walk away from what God called you just for a minute to just to get a reprieve, but your assignment is snitching on you. The Bible says that David left or departed Gath. I remember, how many of y'all remember that from last week? That he departed Gath and the Bible says he escaped to the cave of Adullam. Watch this. He left or departed Gath, but then he escaped to the cave of Adullam. That suggests that David's life was still in danger, so he had to escape. To escape means a trap was set, and some kind of way you managed to get away. Ooh, God, listen, they was already tripping him up and trying to trap him. But some kind of way when you're really anointed and you follow the leading of the Lord. Stuff just can't trap us. Well. 
Listen, I can't stop right here and, and open all this up but today. But I need y'all to grab this. Be, be, that, that the trap was laid for you and was escape proof. But some kind of way God allowed you to awaken right at the right moment. At the right time to keep you from getting caught in the trap. Anybody in here know what it means to be kept by God? That God kept me when I couldn't keep myself. When I was on my way to the trouble because I had the can't help it. It was God. Listen, I remember when I was trying to hold it. I was trying to hold on, y'all. I said, Lord, listen, it don't look like this today. I'm going to be kept. I said, Lord, when I make the phone call, don't let her answer Jesus. I need you to help your brother out. Because I don't see that my fingers is already dialing, Lord. I, but I need you to help me. Okay, y'all going to play like it was just, okay. Y'all go ahead. No, stay phony. Stay right there. That's all right. I'm coming. Listen, David escaped. Somebody say he escapes to the cave of Adullam. Listen, I won't go into a lot of detail about the geography of the text, but know that Adullam is a city that was known for having caves. And the word cave here is not what you and I would normally see as a cave. It's actually, uh, in the Hebrew text, it is translated more a stronghold. For David, Adullam was a safe place because the word Adullam actually means refuge. David arrives at this place or refuge all alone. And for a while, y'all, he was safe. Mm, listen, according to historians, Adullam was a city very near to Philistia. Not too far from the valley where David defeated Goliath. So the place was close enough to the enemy where Saul, King Saul, who was hunting him, would not risk coming across its borders looking for him. And it was right outside of Philistia, which allowed David to be safe from the Philistines. David is now at a place where not far from where it all started from him. And after all this time, he is still no closer to sitting on the throne than he was when he was still living in his father's house. Isn't it amazing that the assignment for our lives lead us down some paths that we could never have expected? I'm here and encourage the hearts of the people, amen, this afternoon because there is purpose in the path. I hope somebody can catch that in the spirit. There is purpose in the path. Although David had been anointed, he lacked the experience to lead a nation. God, listen to me. He had the anointing to be a king. But he wasn't experienced in being a king. If, okay, let me, let me bring it closer to home. You all are anointed to lead right now. Right? If we made you the president of the United States of America right now, would you know what to do? Thank you. Although David had been anointed and lacked the experience to lead a nation, you, you got to understand your anointing ain't enough. You must be prepared. You must be trained for the position. I know y'all anointed, but you still have to be prepared to be appointed. You can have the anointing, but to get the appointment means you've earned the right to sit in the position that God has given you. David is now alone living as a criminal, being pursued by men that he has trained. These are trained killers. And at this moment, he has nothing that would identify him as a king. God has him in the cave of Adullam for one reason. That's to help him deal with offense. God, help me today. Listen, somebody just say this. Somebody may say, you know, well, well wait a minute, Pastor. How was David offended? I'm so glad y'all asked. Listen, David is being hunted by a king and a kingdom. 
Listen, God wanted me to tell y'all this. You will know what you have been called to do when your gifting threatens those currently sitting in the position. (laughs) David is anointed to be king, but he has no throne. Yet he is being hunted by a king and a kingdom. The enemy is not ready to relinquish his control and power. So your name, your presence, your smile, your favor with God reminds them that God has deselected them and has now selected you. Listen, the servants of Achish began calling David a king. Now, he wasn't on the throne, but he was being called a king. While he was in Gath, which is before he had the office. Isn't it amazing how you can get attacked for being what God is making you? My God. Ah, even though you ain't even walking in it yet. Listen, here's another thing God wanted me to tell y'all. I didn't need you to have the seat before I called you. Because when I called you, whatever I say has to manifest. His word can't come back to him void. It must accomplish that which he has sent it out to do. I hope y'all don't mind if I teach just a little bit today. In other words, I don't need you to be on the throne for you to be a king, David. When I anointed you, my mind was already made up about you. For I know the thought. The thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts are good and not evil to bring you. That means you ain't there. He still got to bring you to an expected end. Listen, God is in the process of preparing you for the position that he's anointed you for. Let me bring it closer to home. You're not a wife because you have a ring on your finger. God made you a wife before he found you. That's why when a man findeth a wife, He findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. God already made you a wife. God already made you a husband. All right, where where the real folks at? God already made you a millionaire. God already made you a business owner. God already made you a leader. So what? So what that you go to your house right now all by yourself? So what you barely have enough to pay all your bills? So what you got a whole website and an LLC and ain't got no clients? So what you a leader and ain't nobody following you? If this is you, welcome to the cave of Adullam. Somebody say, I'm a cave dweller. Now listen, here is why the cave is so important, y'all. I'm I'm almost done. Listen, it is here that God causes David to discover three main things. I know Neil is probably writing this because she always writes. Listen, (laughs) the first thing, it it confirms who he will be. Mm -hmm. It identifies where he needs to grow. And the last thing is is to give him on-the-job training on a smaller level so that he can learn how to lead a nation on the larger level. The first thing God did was give him assurance that I chose you. David is sitting in the the cave of Adullam, you all, in the presence of God. Somebody say that, in the presence of God. And God is confirming what he has said to him and what things he will need to do when the time comes. It is here that David gets to experience the presence of God like it was before when he was watching the sheep on the, out in the fields on the backside of a mountain. Listen, this is where the Bible says, most theologians believe, that Psalms 50, 57 was written. Mm-hmm. This is where it was birthed. All right, so let me read it for you real quick. It says, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my adulam or my refuge until these calamity be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. 
He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul, watch this, is among lions. Those that are hunting me. And I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. That means the folk that's even around me that have gathered themselves to me are sitting in a situation where what they talking about ain't what I need to be hearing. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Ah, right. oh God. I said, I said, Doc, you better write that song, Doc. Listen. Yeah. Then he says, My heart is fixed. Yeah. Then he said this, Oh God, he said it again, My heart ah. is fixed. And I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake up, sultry and heart. That means get all my music, get all my instruments together. I need y'all to get up and get get up in the spirit with me. Listen, I'm up. Y'all got to get up. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. David is back, you all, in a familiar place. Back in his comfort zone. Somebody call it their wheelhouse. For those of us who are in the cave, you immediately feel safe. You feel protected. You, you revert back to the worshiper. I mean, the, the sacrificer that you are. The praiser that you are. Secondly, the second thing he shows him is how to deal with offense on different levels. Now y'all know we've been talking about it here in our house. Listen, his family finds out where he is. Come here y'all. And they come to the cave. No doubt they were afraid because Saul is hunting them too. And they probably feel that their lives are also in danger. So they come to the brother that they rejected. They come to the brother that they disregarded. They come to the son that wasn't considered that he couldn't even get dressed for the anointing of the next king because he was out back forgotten. I don't know about y'all, but this is offensive all by itself. How are you all coming to me now for protection when I was the mischievous little brother that you was trying to send home when I brought y'all lunch? I don't have an army. I don't have a way to protect you. Yet God had to prepare David's heart to deal, oh God, with the offense so that he could protect his family later. Later in the chapter, y'all, if y'all if y'all did y'all read an assignment, y'all will read that, that that brother David, he went and told, went down to talk to the king of Moab and said, Listen, I need you to take care of my mom and dad. Can you take care of them? And then he said this until I learn. What God will do for me. He said can you hold my mom and dad down. While the Lord talks to me. About what I got to do next. God allowed an entire kingdom to be David's enemy. So that David would see that his family was a lesser enemy. And he could move to forgiveness and into his calling. Listen don't allow the offense to distract you. From the calling. Please do not think for a moment that overcoming the offense of his family was easy. It wasn't easy for Joseph. When he had to close the door and put everybody out and weep behind the door. Before he could come out and say what y'all meant for evil. God meant it for good. But please understand the pain of the moment was real. And David doesn't get off the hook because how many know the anointing never goes on sale? You always pay full price, my God, to be anointed. Listen, for those that God has called to lead, you must be prepared. 
Your preparation for promotion isn't based on what you learned in school. It's how you manage the pain of offense. God is making you powerful. It will be preceded by pain. Ah, when your anointing is powerful, your preparation will be painful. God, I wish I could help somebody today. Let me say it one more time. When your anointing is powerful, your preparation will be painful. Because the greater the pain, the greater the power. God will not grant you, amen, with great power and not balance it with great pain. The greater the pain, the greater the power. Pain is a part of your power. God uses the pain to confirm who you really are. He confirms your identity. You will know who God is making you by who hates you. God, I'm going to work today. I don't mind. Listen, David is, listen, look at who hates him. David is hated by the king because he is a king. He don't have a throne yet. Oh, listen, you will know who God is making you by who hates you. I'm here to tell you that you will experience pain, not commensurate with your situation, but for your identity. David's name is mentioned before Achish, the king of Gath, and King Saul. Not only will you experience attack on the level of your anointing, you will also experience the frustration the demands on your time and resources. And as Evangelist said, amen, uh, amen, at Bible study this past week, that new levels bring about new devils. The power that God is going to give you, God does not trust people with great power until they learn how to deal with great pain. You have to learn how to be abased and then how to abound. You have to learn that in whatsoever state you are in, therewith to be content. David had to learn in the cave that the state that I am in doesn't determine who I am. I am a king even though I don't have a throne yet. Ah, some of y'all, I am a husband, I am a wife even if I don't have a ring yet. I am a leader if I have followers right now or not. Look back over your life and see the pain of rejection, the pain of disregard, the pain of being passed over, the pain of being selected last. Listen, the third and final thing that the cave will give you is experience. Somebody say experience. Now this isn't about experiencing in faith, amen, because David stood against Goliath with rocks. Before he threw his rock, he told Goliath how God was going to deliver him into his hands. Yeah. David wasn't no punk, and David definitely had faith. But what David lacked was experience. Y'all remember when they tried to put the glory of Israel on him? Okay, y'all remember that, right? The glory of the king is his armor. Oh, God. Listen, so when he would call for his glory, then they would come running to dress him in his armor. Because his armor is different than those that go to war. It carries with it the glory of the kingdom. My God. So here is Saul trying to put the glory on somebody that hadn't proven it yet. And y'all understood when David said, wait a minute, this stuff I haven't proven yet. Take all this stuff off me. Let me just go back to what I know. He said, let me get my little slingshot. And I'm going to go out to this little creek and pick up five smooth stones. I'm going to put them in my little pouch and I'm going to go handle this business. Because of how dare this crazy man think he getting ready to talk about my God like this and I'm not going to do nothing. Now the whole military is standing there talking about, will you shut up and be quiet? Man, do you know that man is a, he's like five times bigger than you? 
And he's stronger than you. Listen, I don't care who he is. If God saved me from the bear. I wish I had. Sometimes you got to go back to your own testimony. If God saved me from a man, the lion, if, if he saved me from the attackers over the things that was there, then the same God that delivered me then will deliver me now. Stop trying to push me. I see y'all. I mentioned to y'all before that many times that, 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 that I sat, I sat, amen, on the organ uh, as a musician and, and I watched preachers and I watched closely uh, at them and, and as much as I thought I knew how to do the job I found out real quickly y'all when I got the position that I, that, 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 that I didn't really know I didn't really know what this was all about now, now here's, here's why, y'all, and I need y'all to come here because I, this is the thing I want to make sure y'all get. David will never be expected to be the same king that Saul was. <clears throat> so, 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 matter of fact, David was picked to succeed him because his administration and giftings were different. God does not expect me to be the same pastor like Bishop John. Listen, I was in the cave, y'all, and didn't even know it. Oh, y'all missed it. I was attacked by pastors because, because I could get more people out to, to, they, to my choir rehearsals than they could get to their Bible study. Can I be transparent for a minute? Oh, they would come at me on Sunday morning. First lady to tell you. Hmm. Not because I could sing so great. Shaka could sing way better than me. Not because I could direct so well. Angela directs way better than me. Mm -hmm. Y'all was supposed to say, no, Pastor, you. No, Y'all just going to agree? Yeah. I'm through with y'all. I'm going to sit down. Listen, here's the thing, though. God taught me that the minister of music must minister to those who have to serve. Mm -hmm. Listen, because here's the thing, because we all the same tribe. Hallelujah. The preachers are also from Levi. Right. The singers and the musicians are all from Levi. Right. The porters are all from Levi. So when I came in to do choir rehearsal, it was more than just teaching you a song and the lyrics and the parts. Amen. At some point, I had to open up and minister what the song was about. And so, watch this. So I would sit there, and in the midst of me doing rehearsal, all of a sudden, people are crying in the midst of the song being sang. They sitting there going in. I done lost the whole alto section. Come on. Joe know what I'm talking about. I, I, would, I would sit there. I would sit there, and, and next thing, and I would just keep playing until, well, listen, because here's my thing. If you get the presence of God and get used to it, Listen, I don't care how you perform on Sunday. If we can't usher in the presence of God, then we have not done our responsibility as the tribe of Levi. Ah, oh, God, listen, listen, listen. We, we, listen, I used to get all kind of attacks. Whatever the attacks the preachers get, so does the musicians. So do the psalmists. Listen, I was, I was not prepared for them attacks in the office that came with being a pastor. Listen, and here's the crazy part, y'all. The Bible says, um, let me rush on to the end. The Bible says that 400 men who were not perfect came to the cave. Stay with me, y'all. Men who were distressed, discontent, and broke. The Bible said they had debt. They came to David because they saw the throne that he sat on in the spirit. The Bible says they submitted to him as their leader. By the time they confronted Nabal, y'all remember Nabal and, and, and Abigail, right? By the time they got to them, it was 600 of them. Ah, the number kept growing. Please understand, a cave can't hold 400 men. David and his family... However, the cane became this secret place of refuge. Y'all wow. know, he that dwelleth in the secret, place. the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow 
of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my adulam. Ah, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him will I trust. God is saying for those of us that are in the cave, your destiny is awaiting you. I'm thankful that God sent the prophet Gad to David and told him, do not stay in Adullam. Do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. As much as the cave has its purpose. The cave is a part of the training regimen. The cave is not our destiny. I rose to tell y'all today, Prince, that we have been in the cave long enough. I am here to tell you that the prophet has spoken and it's time to get up, pack up our bags, and it's time to make our way to Judah. Pastor, how do you know that I'm ready to leave the cave? I'm glad that you asked me today. You'll know when past offense has been healed. While you're in the cave and you're able to take care of those who wounded you in the past, you'll know it's time to leave. When you've been offended that you can see weakness now more than you see wickedness, that's when you know it's time for you to leave. You'll know it's time to leave when you can forgive folks. Whether they ask you or not Because you realize that forgiveness It wasn't for them, it was for you So that you can move on to the next thing that God has for you I can't be distracted trying to wait on you to get your act together Wait on you to get repentant Wait on you to get a clue God says it's too much for you to do now And I need for you to forgive them and get on up and move on into the next thing that I have for you you'll know it's time to leave when the things they said about you becomes your motivation for the walk that you have with God because every little step you take amen the Bible says that you shall condemn we was in prayer on Friday night and sister amen minister Gabby lifted this up it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and then it says every tongue that rises up against you it didn't say God said he would condemn he said you gonna condemn it how you gonna condemn it I'm gonna close my mouth and just walk it out I'm gonna walk out your lie I'm gonna walk out the untruth that you talked about me when you scandalized my name put me in situations that I wasn't there I'm just gonna keep walking I hear my brother tell me at the installation service he that will rule over men must be just it's how you walk you gotta walk upright before God and not only God but before your people you'll know it's time to leave when the things they said about you begin to motivate your walk with God listen you ought to tell your neighbor I don't have to defend myself just watch me walk uh, you ought to tell somebody else uh, I ain't gonna take the time uh, to they meant to defend myself uh, just watch how I walk uh, watch how I walk in victory uh, watch how I walk in healing uh, watch how I walk right into the next uh, anointing and promotion uh, for my life uh, listen he made me David uh, he made David a king, y'all. Wait a minute. Didn't he also make us a king and a priest? Look at your neighbor and say, you a king. There's a certain way, y'all. Now that you've been made a king, there's a certain way that you got to hold your head. Because there's a crown sitting on your head. You can't just do any kind of way. Can't just be throwing your head around. There's a certain kind of way. A man that you got to hold your head. Because there's a crown on your head. A man, touch somebody and tell them I'm royalty. Listen, listen, y'all. Because here's the reason why you got to hold your head. A certain way for the crown. 
because there's weight that comes with the crown hallelujah they made the crowns out of pure gold and they had weight on them and when they had weights and they were placed it on the king or the queen's head and they had to hold their weight amen a certain kind of way folk look at how you're walking now and they say she thinks she all stuck up he think he's so suchy much i'm here to tell you just look at him and say no baby it ain't that i just got a crown on my head i represent the righteousness and the purity of god i represent the holiness oh god of the crown and the glory of the kingdom of god touch somebody's head got weight on it but my neck is strong enough it's got weight on it but amen he broke me too too much stuff and i've earned the right to stand here with the crown and i may not be able to run with it but I can so enough walk with it. I suck somebody and tell them I, I got a crown on my head. Listen, can I command a word of prophecy over the house today? For every cave dweller that's in attendance, the Bible says in Psalms 24, 7 through verse 10, for those that carry the crown, Miranda, we told you on this past Friday, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, the everlasting doors. Why? Because the king of glory shall come in. He asked the question, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up, lift up your heads, oh ye gates, even lift him up, ye everlasting doors, because here come the king, the king of Posa, amen, here come the king, the king of glory, he shall come in, who is the king of glory, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory, every cave dweller huh, who knows that you're not the same bit of person huh, as you were before huh, you're already forgetting those things huh, which are behind huh, you're already reaching huh, for the things that's in front of you huh. more importantly huh, there's a press in your spirit huh, even when you want to stay protected in the cave huh, there's a press huh, in your spirit huh, even when it's easier huh, just to stay where you are somebody say there's a press in my spirit the cave dwellers the kingdom is waiting on us that's why paul said all of creation is groaning and in travail awaiting for the manifestation of the sons of god anybody in here a son of god walking around with the crown on your head hey amen you gotta walk gotta walk up right before god listen we have tarried around this mountain long enough it's time for the tape dwellers to get up from here and move into our next because the kingdom suffered violence but the violence take it by force wait a minute y'all i need y'all to catch this in the spirit now the bible says that the kingdom suffereth now y'all remember the word suffereth means to allow come in y'all now remember he said he told them the disciples they said when the kids came running up to him he said wait a minute suffer the little children to come somebody say permission somebody say allowance so when God says that the kingdom suffereth violence and the violence take it by force God wanted me to tell y'all today that the offense you experience hurt so bad that it felt violent God told me to tell y'all today your pain is commensurate with your power listen I don't know about you I'm about to violently take that 
everything yeah, that violently yeah, came in my life. Uh, now watch this, y'all. Uh, if God allows offense, uh, then the offense had to be violence. Uh, oh God, stay with me now. Uh, so then he says, uh, the kingdom will suffer or allow or permit violence. Uh, but it's the violence uh, that have now become commensurate. Uh, amen. Who has matched up now. Uh, your power and your pain uh, stand on the same level. Uh, and even though the pain is there, uh, I approach it with violence. Uh, do not go take my destiny. Uh, do not go take my child. Uh, do not go take my joy. Uh, do not go take my heart. Uh, do not go take my mind. I will suffer. I'm coming after the violence. Hey Amen. I'm about to walk violence. I'm about to talk violence. I'm about to live violence. Because the violence is taken by force. You ought to tell somebody I'm taking it. I ain't asking no more. It belongs to me. I don't cry too much. It belongs to me. I don't hurt too much. It belongs to me. Woo! I've been through too much now. It belongs to me. You can't have my joy. You can't have my peace. You can't have my children. You can't. time to get violent. My power doesn't match my pain. I wish somebody could catch it. My power matches my pain. I didn't know I was this wrong. But I endured it. I endured hardness. As a good soldier, I stayed the path. Oh God. It took some violence though. I had to swing. I had to fight. Amen. But I was worth it. My God. My destiny was worth it. My destiny was worth it. All right, I'm done. Listen, y'all sit down. Cave dwellers, holler at your boy. If you a cave dweller and you're willing to fight, Listen, y'all sit down before I hurt myself. Listen. Now, this is really what blessed me, Digger Shoe. This is what really blessed me, y'all. These men, these men joined David in a cave. And they committed themselves to him so much so. I want to read this for y'all because it blessed me. It says, David was just talking out loud. He said, longingly, oh, that someone would give me water. My God. To drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three men broke through the camp of the Philistines to get one glass of water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. David saw the sacrifice. Okay, wait a minute. David saw the violence of the king, the kingdom. That these men was willing, three men was willing to fight through enemy lines. Watch this. To bring him a glass of water. Watch this. That he didn't even ask for. When they got back with the water, with the bruises and the scars. David looked at him and said, I can't. I 
can't drink this. He poured it out as a drink offering to the Lord. And said, far be it from me before my God that I should do this. Shall I drink the lifeblood of these men? For at the risk of their lives, they brought it to me. Therefore, he would not drink. These things did the three mighty men. When they recognized that he is our king. It didn't matter the sacrifice. Watch this. Because who he is ministers to my soul. I was broken when I got to him. But when he ministered to me, when I submitted to his leadership, my life started turning around. If he wants a drink of water, I don't care where I got to go to get it. Uh... My question to you today is, the king that we serve, his name is Jesus. Has he been good enough to you for you to make the sacrifice to cross enemy lines? To bring him what he asked for? Uh, Oh God, listen, when you understand who the king is, And you understand that you are a cave dweller on your way to Judah. Oh, God. Lift your hands, y'all. Father, we have been in the cave. And most of us now, we know who we are. We understand our assignment. Because we know who's been fighting us. <laughs> Thank you for showing me where I'm on my way. Now, God, you are preparing me for it. And it's a lot of pain, God. But I thank you because you told me today that however great the pain, that will be is commensurate with the power. Ah, God. Thank you for the uncomfortableness. Thank you for the uncomfortableness on the season I'm in. That I don't have to have everything perfect. All I got to have is you. And I'm good. I can dwell in the cave if I have to. Ah, all of us. I'll stay here, God. I don't have to have fine furniture. I don't have to have a Bentley outside. I just need you. You are my king. And I'll go get the water if you need it. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom suffered or allows violence and offense. Ah, but the violent take it by force. And for this, God, we thank you on today. I thank you for my brother and my sister. And I'm asking God as we move into our next, God, that you fortify your people. Let them see that their power is there to match their pain. However great the pain was, that's how great the power is. I didn't know I was this powerful until I had to cry. I didn't know I was this powerful until I had to be broken. I didn't know I was this powerful. But thank you for revealing today how much power I really have. So now I don't ask the devil to leave. Record those signs. I command the devil to leave. Hallelujah. I have, amen, the power of God. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you believe that today, come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, kingdom, let's get violent. We on our way to Judah. We on our way to praise. Come on, we leaving the cave because we on our way to praise. Anybody want to be saved? Anybody want prayer? Come on. Come on, this is your time. Come on. We get ready to come through this thing. The enemy can't have nothing else. But my kingdom here is 
worth it. Say, come on. Listen. Come on, everybody in the house praying. Come on. Anybody need prayer? Just lift your hands right where you are. Just lift your hands right where you are in the house. God, I thank you for every person that's here, God, that's seeking for a deeper relationship with you. Touch us, God. Help us, God. Show us our power, God. Help me walk back through my life and see how much pain has really been there to bring us to our next. And for this, we thank you and we praise you on today. We thank you, God. Said it's worth it. It's worth so worth so worth my calling on my life. All of my friends. Listen, this is Prince of Peace Apostolic Church. Amen. We are so grateful that you came to worship with us on today. Amen. And we know that God is going to bless you richly. Amen. For just worshiping with us. Amen. Let us know. Amen. That you have enjoyed our services by contacting our church, 773-493-7600. Amen. By text or call. Amen. We just want to be encouraged. Let us know that we're touching your heart wherever you may be. We also want to invite you to all services that we have on every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. We gather right in this place, 6848 South Cottage Grove Avenue, amen, where we break forth the word of God. Amen. We thank God for all of all, all of you all that are hanging out with us. Also, too, on this coming Friday, we will have 545, amen, prayer, amen. So we are asking everybody to come on. If you want the link, just type it in the comment section. You, I need the link to the prayer. Come on and join us in prayer, amen. Men should always pray and not faint amen also too we will be gathering back in the house this coming this coming sunday fourth sunday we want everybody to come and we want everybody to dress down be casual all right we're gonna get casual amen appropriately casual amen uh, but we will be casual <laughs> amen on this coming sunday amen god bless you all thank you all for joining us and as as senior pastor always says that i say don't believe what you see See what you believe. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.